Vlakith cast Sivim Hrath Crashhead. Only in Vlakith may we find light. These were the first words I ever read on Tirsu's slate. But they are no mere aphorism. They are law. They are creed. The root from which the 10,000 protocols stem. Forsake one protocol and forsake Vlakith. Forsake Vlakith and be the blood and meat which sates her dragons. If Voss speaks true, if Ascension is a lie, if Tadpole Purification is a fairy tale, then I have not sinned against Flakith. She has sinned against me. Ascension is a young Gith Yankee's greatest honor. Long ago, the Gaith enslaved my people. They dominated our minds and bred us for war, until Great Mother Gith took a hammer to our bonds. From the day of our hatching, young Gith have one purpose, to train hard enough to slay a Gaith and take its head. Then, we speak the rite of Ascension, and a red dragon comes to fly us to Vlakith, in Tunarath, City of Death. We are honored with an eternal home in the Astral, celebrated for our victory. We are ascended, or so I believed. I don't know. I can't know. And that drives me mad. At first, I thought them an illithid deception, a trick of the tadpole. But the dream figure is real. It lives in the prism. Vos believes they are the seed of Vlakith's demise and the agent of Githyanki freedom. And I believe he may be right. I never thought Vlakith a tyrant or me as a vassal. She was the source of my might, and I the envoy of her will. A warrior, a champion, a destroyer. But if Voss is right, and Vlakith consumes the Ascended to gain power, then I am no destroyer. I am mere livestock, bred to be harvested and devoured. Every Githyanki is a slave with a singular purpose. Not to cull the Geich, not to prevent their grand design, but to raise Vlakith to true godhood. Then, when the Kithraki come for me, and come they will, I will submit to their blades. They would feed me to their dragons, and I would deserve no better. Yes, I'd like time to think. We'll meet Kithrak Voss at Charesse's caress in Baldur's Gate. Until then, be vigilant. Vlakith's eyes are upon us. So, Lazel's going to war with Vlakith? Going to break her chains in Baldur's Gate? Good for her. The dog is unable to speak through the small bag he holds in his mouth. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. All I know is I thought of you when I saw it. Voss have to show for himself when we catch up with him, I wonder. His intelligence may yet prove the key to unlocking the artifact's secrets. We should ensure we follow up when we reach Baldur's Gate. Don't waste a step. We must press forward. Let's deal with Kethric, then find Voss in Baldur's Gate. The gods are watching me. What a charmer. Still alive. 
So that's progress. Sure, why not? It'll take a while for us all to recover, but you've helped us take the first step. Of course. May you keep balance. There we go. runs through you. Your magic, the fire that burns within, is fading. Your magic erupts, violent and powerful, but is snuffed out by the Susa flower, vanishing like embers in the wind. What's the matter? I could swear this plant's got you flush. Chin up. I'll wager they'll come back as soon as we move away from here. That's the spirit. Now let's get moving before anything else goes missing. Yeah! you yes we need to go find Damon I'm going to get a hug soon one day I'll catch a break I 
Shadow Curse is upon us. As foul as I remember it. Perhaps even worse. But with the Oak Father's blessing, we may soon see it banished from these lands. This land is more than just soil and rock, root and leaf. It is a living being, in the form of a young fey boy, with the forest itself in his eyes. His name is Thaniel. I've met him in my meditations, but since the curse was unleashed, I have not felt his presence. He is its prisoner, I fear. And as long as he remains so, his domain will lie in darkness. But if we can find him, we can break the curse. If you learn anything of the Shadow Fell, or of a boy with the forest in his eyes, find me at once. I can't be exact, unfortunately. Time and the Shadow Curse won't have been kind to any traces that would have been left behind. A living witness is unlikely, I'll admit. But perhaps there'll be an unliving witness, or some lingering echo of what we seek. Don't worry. If you find something, you will know it. It's not easy seeing the ravages of the Shadow Curse. But your camp is a most welcome solace. You've shared your fire with me, your company. A small pocket of light against the darkness. But one I couldn't do without. Thank you. You're too modest by far. What fate would I have met without you? Rotting in the goblin cells? Dying against an onslaught on the grove? More good has been done since I met you than in a hundred years before. Words cannot express my gratitude. Yes, I think you do. Forgive me. Sometimes I forget myself, gazing on the beauty of nature's creations. Time's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil, and a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting him out. Will your playmates wasting precious time? Let's see about getting his priorities fixed. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a vernus. Now. Be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mizora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. 
What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? from a children's story said to void a devil's contract abi diabole et numquam ready you hold the winning hand fine I'll play your game but I amend the pact once the mission's done not before clause F section 9 soul binder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearers fulfillment of related obligation now to moonrise pet and do mind the shadows They've been especially hungry. This dark land must be filled with the broken, the beaten, the desperate. The perfect praying ground for a devil who offers a way out for those who sign on the dotted line. I hope we end up seeing our friend Raphael down here somewhere. You don't have to sign anything. Just help me find him. When I was taken to his house, I was caught off guard. But now, now I know what to ask for. I knew you would understand. God damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets? What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? Look, Will's happiness is my happiness. I'd sooner see myself a lemia than him. But it's a bad idea to play games with a devil. You never win. Not ever. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the Blade stands for. Such an asshole. The same thought crossed my mind. I'm only to hunt the Infernal, the Demonic, and the Heartless. But nowhere was it stated that I can't help one. Either we find it, or I made a mindless blob clawing at demons on the front line of the blood war. And it means everything to me. 
I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. <clears throat> Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it. But I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can feel Mazora scheming, plotting. She won't let me go without making a fuss. Trust me on that. <laughs> 